in just a moment here, best plays on NBC. But here's a not-too-secret formula for daytime pleasure. Each weekday, NBC has a lineup of stars who are experts at entertaining you. There's Bob Hope and Dave Garraway, a visit with Carlton E. Morse's One Man's Family, and the newest of the quiz games, the phrase that pays with Red Benson as your MC. Of course, NBC brings you the newest news, too, when Morgan Beatty calls in correspondents from home and abroad to make their reports on news of the world. Indeed, there's wonderful listening every day on NBC. Now it's Best Plays on NBC. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Arthur Kennedy in Mr. Roberts by Thomas Hagen and Joshua Logan. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Good evening and greetings. We are happy to return to the NBC network with a new series of best plays. And we are putting our best foot forward with the first broadcast anywhere of one of the most popular and most distinguished comedies of our modern theater. It is Mr. Roberts by Joshua Logan and the late Thomas Hagen. You will, this evening, be using your imagination, as all playgoers must in any kind of theater. I would like you now to imagine the Alvin Theater here in New York on the opening night of February 18th, 1948. The audience was fashionable, distinguished, and alive with excitement for the Broadway grapevine had passed along the word that here was something special in the way of a play, a production, and a performance. As the curtain was lowered on the final scene, there was a roar of cheering. Finally, Henry Fonda stepped to the stage apron to express thanks, and he drawled, Well, I guess the only thing we could do is to start it all over again. And all of us there would have sat right through a second performance, but such a thing wasn't possible. I think we're going to have a fine performance now of Mr. Roberts with one of Broadway's ablest actors in the title role. Imagine now a theater stage, or soon, I hope, a motion picture screen. The time, a few weeks before V.E. Day. The place, the U.S. Navy cargo ship AK-601, somewhere in the Pacific. It is war. Around the world, fighting men crouch alert, on naval vessels, lookouts scan the skies anxiously. On the AK-601, Chief Boston's mate Johnson is alone on deck. He looks carefully to right, to left, behind him, and then he acts. Morning, Chief. Oh. Oh. Hiya, Mr. Roberts. Watering the captain's palm tree? Yeah. Yeah. Look kind of lonely in the gasoline can. <laughs> kind of dry. Yeah. Well, I got to turn them on. Excuse me. Beverly, it's the day. It's the new day. Yes, you do. Hello, Doctor. What are you doing up? I heard you were working cargo today, so I thought I'd get ready. On days when there's any work to be done, I can always count on a big turnout at sick call. Say, uh, Doug, uh, is there something wrong? No. We missed you when you went out on watch last night. I gave young Ensign Pulver another drink of alcohol and orange juice, and it inspired him to relate further amatory feats of his. <laughs> Some of them bought it on the supernatural. I, I don't doubt it. I'm not sure what to do with Pavel. I'm thinking of reporting his record to the American Medical Association. Say, uh, there is something wrong, isn't there? I've been up all night, Doc. What is it? What's the matter? I saw something last night when I was on watch that just about knocked me out. What happened? Uh, I was up on the bridge. I was just standing there looking out to sea. And there they were. Little black specks crawling over the horizon. Carriers and battleships and cans. A whole task force. They passed about a half a mile from that reef. Carriers so big they blacked out half the sky. I could see the men on them. <laughs> it's 
Somehow I thought I was on those bridges all the time. Yeah. I know how that must have hurt, Doug. Then I, I looked down from our bridge and saw our captain's palm tree, a trophy for superior achievement. The Admiral John J. Finchley Award for delivering more toothpaste and toilet paper than any other Navy cargo ship in the safe area of the Pacific. And that... Here, read this, Doc. See how it sounds. Another application for transfer? I rewrote it. Stronger. From Lieutenant J.G. Douglas Roberts. Two... Bureau of Naval Personnel. Boy, this is sheer poetry. Read that. After two years, four months, I feel my continued service aboard can only reduce my usefulness to the Navy and increase disharmony aboard the ship. What do you say, Doc? I've got a chance, haven't I? Look, Doc, you send these letters in every week. Every week the captain screams like a stuck pig, disapproves the letters, and forwards them. But he's got to forward them. That's the regulation. Doug. The captain of a Navy ship is the most absolute monarch left on this earth. If he approves, you get your orders in a minute. Disapproves, you haven't got a prayer. You're stuck on this old bucket, Doug. Face it. Well, uh, I've got to go down to my hypochondriac. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Roberts. Good morning, Dottie. Yeah, it's even hotter up here than down in that mess hall. Look at that crummy hat. Smell it. So hot it already smells like a hog pen. Mr. Roberts, when are you going to the captain again and ask him to give this crew a liberty? These guys ain't been off the ship in over a year. Dowdy, the, duty. the last time I asked him was last night. What'd he say? He said no. We've got to get these guys ashore. They're going Asiatic. Dowdy, will you have Dolan type this up for me? Oh, your letter. Yes, sir. Well, I guess I'd better get them guys up. Stefanowski. Yeah. You take these guys and get this rust patch here. Mm hmm. Signa? Uh. Got a real special job for you. You and Mannion clean these binoculars. Uh. Clean them good. Hey. Hey, look. <laughs> I can see myself in a lens. Terrifying, ain't it? Ha, ha, ha. I wonder if you could get sent back to the States if you cut off a finger. Mm. Hey, they got a new building on that island. You know, I had a girl in San Francisco wore flowers in her hair. Mm. Instead of hats. Mm. Never wore a hat. Hey, hey, Stefanowski. Yeah? Which end of this you look through? It's optional, Insignia. Depends on what size eyeball you got. I got it. Hey, the Japs must have taken over this island. That's a red and white flag on that building. Japs, it's a hospital flag. Anybody ask you? Hey, they got a fancy hospital. Big windows and a big... What's the matter? Holy... She, she, she's taking a shower. Gee, it's a bathroom at night. Give me those binoculars. Hey, save a pair for me. She's a blonde. Oh, I've never seen such a beautiful girl. Hey. Hey, honey. Honey. Come over here, by the window. There's another one over by the wash basin taking a shampoo. Yeah, with a bathrobe. What a stupid way to take a shampoo. Uh-huh. Uh, she's coming out of the shower. She's coming over to the window. Cry, Vinny! Yeah. Hey, what was that red mark when she turned around? It was a birthmark. Birthmark? What do you think it is, white guy? It's paint. She sat in some red paint. I'm telling you, it's a birthmark. No. What? What happened? She put her bathrobe on. Same color as that stupid bag taking a shampoo. Bag, huh? Look at her now, with her head out of the water. Ooh, 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 she's as beautiful as the other one. Hey, they look exactly alike with them bathrobes on. Maybe they're twins. And uh, 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 that's my gal on the right, the one with the red birthmark. Yeah, that stupid crumb, the one with the bright marks on her left. Yeah, pig's eye, she is. Oh, no. Whoa, 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 I'm out of focus. They're both going out the door. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, girls. Let's go. Yeah, who wants a nice, zippy shower? They must think we got nothing better to do than stand here. Hey, these glasses are getting heavy, you know. Look, well, why don't we stand watch, huh? Mannion, you take it first. Uh, sure, sure, sure. You, you guys, uh, rest your eyes. Well, I don't trust that slot. All right, Mannion, anybody in there now? Uh-huh. Uh oh, 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 no, no, not yet. Let me see. Well, you dirty, miserable cheater. Oh, 
Yeah, you should have seen her a second ago. Are oh, you low down peeping Tom? Trying to hold out on Ah, you loudmouth. Shut up, man. You know, worse no good loudmouth in the hole. Yes, oh, yeah. Come on. Hey, hey, keep hey, the big hey, yap hey, out of this. You hey, heard me. Come on, you heard me. All right, all right. Let me go, Daddy. I'll right, send right. Hey. Now, what's going on here? There's no good loudmouth oh, here. Shut up. Both of you. I'm going to give it to the first one that opens his mouth. Now, get to work, all of you. Go on. Okay. Mannion, take those glasses up to the bar to work on them. Yes, sir. Stefanowski. Yes, sir. Keep those two apart. Yes, sir. Clean that, Mr. Roberts. Last night I stopped three of them fights. They gotta have a liberty, Mr. Roberts. Yeah, they sure do. Dowdy, call a boat for me. I'm going ashore. I got a new angle. Are you going over to Captain's head? No. I'm going around his end, I hope. Now get the lead out, Dowdy. Sweepers man your broom. Do not throw trash over the fantail. Now hear this. Because in violation of the captain's orders, the man has appeared on deck without a shirt on. There'll be no movies again tonight. By order of the captain. Box. Here's your letter, Mr. Roberts. I typed it. Huh? Oh, it's only you, Mr. Pullman. Have you seen a shoebox, Dolan? No. Ain't Mr. Roberts back from the island yet? No, no. But when he gets back, will you ask him to sign this letter? Well, what is it? The best transfer request he ever wrote. It's going to blow the old man right through the overhead. He gets sick to his stomach when he gets extra mad at Mr. Roberts. With this letter, I'm going to take along the waste basket. Let me know when he gets back, huh? Transfer? Increase disharmony aboard this ship. Come on in, Doc. Oh. Hi, Frank. Uh, Dolan, come in with my letter. Uh, I, I, I don't know, Doug boy. I just got him myself. Uh-huh. You see, Doc, the port director confided in me that he drank a quart of whiskey every day of his life. So when I broke up that fight, I, I figured he, he might sell his soul for a quart of scotch. Doug, did you give that shoebox to the port director? I did. Compliments of the captain. Doug, you gave that bottle to a man. Man? <laughs> Will you name me another sex within a thousand miles? Doug, it came to me this morning. I, I was just lying here thinking. A little breeze came up. I took a breath and I said to myself, Pulver boy, there's women on that island. Oh, oh, oh you're crazy. Nurses, they flew in last night. There are two blondes there, Doug. Twins. I, uh, I asked one of them out to the ship for lunch. She said she was kind of tired. So I said, isn't there anything in the world that will make you come out to the ship with me? And she said, yes. There is one thing, and one thing only. A good stiff drink of scotch. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, Frank. Your first assignment in a year. Uh, no scotch. No girl. Hey, Doc. Let's make some scotch. Huh? When naval officers are supposed to be resourceful, Frank here had a great opportunity, and I let him down. Let's fix him up. Right. Frank, where's the rest of that alcohol we were drinking last night? In the vinegar bottle. Mm. But that ain't even the right color. Uh, color. Uh, uh, Coca-Cola. Have you got any? No, oh, not in four or five months. Oh, well. In the drawer, Doc. What? Uh, yeah, I, I, I forgot about it. Okay. Now, alcohol and Coke. Uh, what shade would you like? Uh, Cutty Sock, Hagen Hague, Vat 69? I told her Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker it is. Just a dash. There. Johnny Walker, red label. Yeah, but how about the taste? Hey, Doc, what does scotch taste like? Uh, like, uh... Mm, uh well, uh, it's a little like... Hey, you uh, know what it always tasted a little like to me? Iodine. Right. One drop of iodine for taste. Mm-hmm. Now a little something for age. Uh, what have you got, Doug? Let's see. Bromo seltzer. Wild root wave set. You know, fruit salt. Cremel hair's on it. Cremel. It has a cold tar base. Ah, this will age the ears off it. There. Try some, Doug? Hmm. It does. It does taste like scotch. <laughs> This is delicious. <laughs> Dumb little blonde won't know the difference. Here you are, Frank. Doug and I have made the scotch. Uh, the nurse is your department. Yeah, she won't know the difference. 
Oh, boy, you guys are good to me. <laughs> oh, don't, don't mention it, Frank. You almost deserve it. <laughs> you give me the old needle again? What do you really think of me, Doug, honestly? Frank, I like you. Huh? No one can get around the fact that you're a likable guy. Yeah? But... But what? But I also think you are the most hapless, lazy, disorganized... And in general, the most lecherous person I've ever known in my life. I am not. Not what? I am not disorganized, for one thing. And you're scared of the captain. Well, I'm not scared of the captain. <laughs> then why do you hide in the passageway every time you see him coming? Well, I, I, I'm scared of what I might do to him. <laughs> then what happened to your idea of plugging up the captain's sanitary system? Oh, that. Uh, and those marbles you are going to put in the captain's overhead so they'd roll around at night and keep them up. Well, I, I, I've been collecting marbles. I got one right here in my pocket. I'm looking for marbles all day long. Frank, you asked me what I thought of you. Well, the day you have the guts to put those marbles in the captain's overhead, then knock on his door and say, Captain, I put those marbles there, that's the day I'll look up to you as a man. Okay? Okay. Well, what's keeping Dolan with my letter? I'm going to find him. Oh, Doug, oh, wait. I, uh... I wouldn't send him that letter if I were you. Uh, you've got it. Now, Wait. give it to me. Oh. So what's the idea? Here. You can't send it that way. It's too strong. It's... Well, you get transferred and get your head shot off. Now, 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 tell him what you said to me last night, Doc, about how stupid he is. Yes, Doc. Maybe you'd like to tell me to my face. Yes, I would. You said anyone who doesn't want to fight is half alive. That's for the birds, Doug, for the birds. Whether you like it or not, this sorry old bucket does a necessary job. And you're the guy who keeps the lumbering along. You keep this crew working cargo. And more than that, you keep them alive. It might just be that right here on this bucket, you're deeper and more truly in this war than you ever would be anywhere else. In a minute, you'll start quoting Emerson. That is a lousy thing to say. What is it you want to be? A hero or something? Hero? Doc, you haven't heard a word I've been saying. Look, Doc, the war is way out there. I'm here. That task force that went by is on its way to our last big push in the Pacific. And it went by me, Doc. I've got to catch it. In your letter. There it goes. You're part of the line. You go tell the captain I'm busy. Get a fender over quick. Take that line around the bit. Come on, come on, come on. All secure. All right, Mr. Roberts. What do you mean, telling me you're busy? We parted a line, Captain. You didn't want me to leave the deck with a ship coming in on us. When I tell you I want to see you, I mean now. Mister, I mean jump. You understand? You think you're pretty cute with this letter, don't you? Trying to get me in bad with the Admiral, ain't you? Ain't you? No, I'm not, Captain. Then what do you mean by writing disharmony aboard this ship? Because it's true, Captain. <laughs> Any disharmony aboard this ship is my own door. That's true, too, Captain. You bet it's true. And it ain't gonna be in any letter that leaves this ship. I got a reputation with the Admiral. I ain't gonna lose it on account of a letter written by some smart alley college officer. You cut that stuff out, and I'll send it in. This is the last one. Understand? Captain, every man in the Navy has the right to send in a request for transfer, and no one can change the wording. That's in Navy regs. How about that, Dolan? Uh, that, that's what it says, sir. How do you like that? What on Navy? I never put up with this kind of malarkey in the merchant service. All right, I'll send this one in. Disapproved like I always do. But you bring in one more letter and you'll regret it the rest of your life. Mister, you ain't never going to leave this ship. And who told these men that they could take their shirts off? Get those shirts on quick, Captain. It was so hard work. Shut up! I said get them shirts on. I'm giving you an order. I said put those shirts on. I'm sorry. Put your shirts on. Aye, aye, sir. Who's the captain of this ship? That's the rankest piece of insubordination. You've been getting pretty smart playing Potsy with Mr. Roberts. But you've gone too far. I'm giving you a little promise. I ain't gonna forget this. Every one of you men, 
is on report. Roberts, you've just got yourself ten days in your room. Ten days, Mr. Ten days. See how you like that. Yes, sir. Here's the cargo list. Manifest. Well, what, what are you doing? Going to my room. You get back to that cargo. I'll let you know when you have ten days in your room. You're going to stay right here and do your job. Now, get going. <laughs> Go on, Mr. Roberts. Oh, beautiful. Real beautiful. <laughs> you going to send that letter in next week, Mr. Roberts? Are we going? You bet we are. What do you think he'll do? Yeah, you got a promotion coming up, haven't you? He could stop that. Promotion? This is Mr. Roberts. You think he cares about another lousy, no good strike? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Roberts, can I take the letter in next week? Get lost, get lost. That's my job, isn't it, Mr. Roberts? We got to write a really hot one next week. <laughs> okay, darling. You got any asbestos paper? Careful. Careful. There we are. <laughs> Here it is. This is a ship? Uh-huh. You've seen a lot of action? Well, not in the last year. I've... Oh, you mean battle action? Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you must have a lot of BS on here. Hmm? You know, battle fatigue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, say, you know what, uh, what I was thinking of? I uh, I thought that we should have a little drink of that old scotcheroo right now, huh? I think so, too. Good. You know, I just love scotch. I've just learned to drink it since I'm in the Army. My twin sister has a nickname for me that's partly because I like scotch. And partly because of a little personal thing about me that you wouldn't understand. She calls me Red Label. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You don't know what I'm talking about. And what's more, you never will. Huh. Well, where's that drink for a thirsty nursing? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, we, we mustn't be seen. Let me see. Where shall we go? Oh, I have it. And we'll, uh, we'll go to my cabin. Uh, right this way. <laughs> You're what my outfit calls an operator. But you look harmless. Right this way. Hey, I get the big glasses. My eyes are weak. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Mannion, uh, Stefanowski, Insigna. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Girard. How do you do? Hi, Hi. Lieutenant. Uh, what are all you men doing with those binoculars? Uh, huh? Oh, oh, cleaning them. Clean, cleaning them, see? Yeah. <clears throat> it's getting a little uh, stuffy up here. But maybe we better hey, go... Hey, Insigna, Mannion, get a load of this. Oh. Hello. Uh, hiya, Doug boy. Uh, this is Ann Girard, Doug Roberts. Oh, how do you do? Frank told me about it. Listen, Doug, will you excuse us? We're going down to have a little drink. Oh, Frank, aren't you going to ask Doug to join us? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, he doesn't like scotch. Yeah, that, that's right. I, I stay true to alcohol and orange juice. Well, come on, Ann. Oh, you know, we all ought to have a party. Go on, I'll bet you 50 right, bucks. No, it's not <laughs> Seems to be an argument. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, come, come on. Here. We're fixing up the day room. What? Look, you can see our hospital from here, that building. And there's our new dormitory, that, that first window. All right, all right, Manion, I got a hundred bucks. She's the one with the first mark on her. Huh? Miss Pelvis, may I have those binoculars? Sure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Mr. Pelvis, will you call the boat, please? But, Anne... Uh, goodbye, Mr. Roberts. It was nice knowing you. You see, I promised the girls I'd help them hang some curtains. And I think we'd better get started right away. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, what's your name? Mark mine? No. Yours. Oh, me? Oh. Mannion. Well, Mannion, I wouldn't take that bet if I were you, because you'd lose a hundred bucks. Come on, Hyman. You loud mouth, did oh, it? You've done shut it. Shut up. And Signa, how did you... Signa taking a shower with the glass. We could see everything. Now she's going to hang some curtains. Yeah. See, them nurses look pretty to look at. Well, she's got a ten-minute boat ride. You still got ten minutes. No, it's no fun if you're rushed. It's all over now. Well, maybe you've got time to listen to this then. AK-601 will proceed at ten knots to Elysium Island for cargo assignment. During its stay in Elysium, the ship will make maximum use of the recreational facilities of this port. Hey. But that means liberty! Liberty! Hey, has the old man seen them one? Hey, hey, he saw them before I did. Liberty! Hey, liberty! liberty. Hey, hey, liberty. Hey, hey, liberty! 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 Um, Culver. Yeah? 
Hand me those binoculars. Who do you see now, Sam? Ah, a lot of canoes. All filled with flowers and stuff, and there's, there's women in them boats. Paddling. Women? Where? Where? Hey, hey, Dowdy, you've been here before. Where's that park where all those good-looking women hang out? I told you 50 times. What? It's keeping us. When is the old man going to lose the Hey, here it comes. Now hear this. Now hear this. Liberty will come in immediately. Now hear this. The captain will now make a personal announcement. Oh, it will not be long now. Hey, 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 Insignia, get into them whites. We'll be the first over the side. Hey, you got two bottles on my pants. Hey, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, right in my eye. This is the captain speaking. I just woke up from a little nap, and I got a surprise. Uh-oh. I found out there were men on this ship who were expecting liberty. I'm getting a sick feeling. I'd like to clean up this rumor. Because of cargo requirements and security, there'll be no liberty. What are you talking oh, about, no liberty? In this here port. Oh, no. No liberty. Oh. That is all. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Roberts. 38 seconds. Pretty good time. I've been expecting you ever since I made my little announcement. Well, what about it? When does this crew get liberty? It doesn't. This wasn't my idea, coming to a liberty port. One of my officers arranged it with a certain port director. Gave him a bottle of Scotch whiskey, compliments of the captain. Captain, let's quit wasting time. You hear that music? Don't you know it's tearing those guys apart? They're breakable, Captain. I promise you. I had enough of your fancy educated talk. Now, you listen to me. I got two things I want to show you. You see that? That's a full commander's cap. I'm going to wear that cap someday, and you're going to help me. I got that palm tree award from the Admiral because you worked cargo for me. There's nothing going to stand between me and that hat. Now, last week you wrote a letter that said disharmony aboard this ship. This morning I find another letter on my desk. Friction between myself and the commanding officer. That ain't going to go in, mister. How are you going to stop it, Captain? I ain't. You are. Just how much do you want this crew to have liberty anyhow, Mr. Roberts? Enough to get out of the habit of letter writing? Because that's the only way this crew is ever going to get ashore... How did you get into the Navy? How did you get on our side? You ignorant, arrogant, ambitious jackass, keeping 167 men in prison because you got a palm tree for the work they did. I don't know which I hate worse, you or that other malignant growth that stands outside your door. Listen, Robert. How did you ever get command of a ship? I realize in wartime they have to scrape the bottom of the barrel, but where did they ever scrape you up? There's just one thing left for you, college boy, a general court-martial. That suits me fine. Court-martial. All right, you got it. I'm asking for it. If I can't get transferred off here, I'll get court-martialed off. I'm fed up. But you need a witness. Now, go ahead. Call your messenger. Go ahead. You want me to call him? No. I think you're a pretty smart boy. I know how to take care of smart boys. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little secret. I hate your guts, you scummy college slob. You think you're better than I am. Listen. I worked since I was ten. I worked for your kind. A busboy steward on a ship. I took it from your kind. But now there's a war on and I'm captain. And you're going to take it from me. The worst thing I can do to you is to keep you on this ship. And that's where you're going to stay. Get out of here. Well, get out! What do you want for liberty, Captain? I want plenty. You're through writing letters ever. Okay. You're through giving me trouble. You're through talking back to me in front of the crew. You ain't gonna open your mouth. And you won't go blabbing about this to anyone ever. It might not sound so good. And besides, I don't want you taking credit for getting this crew ashore. Do you think I'm doing this for credit? You think I'd let anyone know about this? I gotta be sure. You've got my word. Yeah. You college fellas make a big show about keeping your word. How about it, Captain? 
Is it a deal? Yeah. Now, here it is. This is the captain speaking. I got some further word on security conditions. And it gives me great pleasure to tell you that liberty for the starboard section... The entire crew. Correct. Liberty for the entire crew will commence immediately. Listen to them crazy girls. <laughs> Listen to them. In a moment, Act Two of Mr. Roberts, starring Arthur Kennedy. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Here is a bulletin from NBC News. We have the names of three more Americans released tonight at Pan Moon Jam. Master Sergeant Gilbert Christie of Montezuma, Indiana. Corporal William L. Conley of Morristown, Arkansas. And Corporal John L. Walters, Jr. of Beckley, West Virginia. And more information on three names we gave you earlier. PFC Thomas R. Barnes is from Dadeville, Alabama. PFC Theodore A. Juran is from Forest Park, Illinois. And Corporal John King is from Orlando, Florida. Keep tuned to your NBC station for the later news. Act two of the best plays production of Mr. Roberts, starring Arthur Kennedy. Here again is John Chapman. Liberty has been underway for several hours now, and the casualties from the AK-601 are beginning to roll in. As Mr. Roberts checks off the names, the happily oblivious crew members are hauled in cargo nets from the dock to the deck of the ship. Here comes another batch, Mr. Roberts, a whole paddy wagon full. An army paddy wagon. We haven't filed away this batch yet. Hurry up, Doc! <laughs> uh, where do we put number 23 here, Doc? Sick bay or what? Uh, just put him to bed. His condition's only critical. Well, I just rolled out of their bunks, Doc. Now I'm stacking them on the deck down there. I'm on the third layer already. Okay, Lieutenant. All set down here. You ready? Okay. Here they come, Doc. Heads up. Off we go. Let that card on that down easy. Slack away. Let her in easy. Oh, oh. Oh, looks like a real haul this time. Johnson, start untangling them. You the duty officer, sir. That's right, soldier. I got another batch for you. All right, let's go. Far away, far away, far away. He wears it for an Navy man who's far, far away. Far away. Colonel Middleton presents his compliments to the captain and wishes him to know that these men made a shambles out of the colonel's testimonial dinner dance. Is this true, Insignia? That's right, Mr. Roberts. A shambles. Ain't that right, Killer? That's right, Mr. Roberts. You men crashed a dance for Army personnel? Yes, sir. And they made us feel so unwelcome. Uh, didn't they, Slugger? Oh, they started the fight, huh? Oh, no, sir. We started it. Oh, we finished it, too. Go ahead. Tell Mr. Roberts how many of you Army Karums have been a hospital. Yeah, go on. 38 soldiers of the United States Army have been hospitalized. Mm. And the colonel himself has a very bad bruise on his left shin. I did that, Mr. Roberts. The colonel will want to know what punishment you're going to give these men. Well, tell the colonel I'm sure our captain will think of something. But, sir... Yeah, that's all, soldier. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, what have you got to say for yourselves? Okay, if we go ashore again, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> Is this the first time for you guys? Oh, yeah, we've only been brought back once. What do you say, Doc? Anybody got a fractured skull? No. Oh, buddy. Okay, you passed the physical. We passed the physical. Go on, fellas. Get down and take a shower first and get into some clothes. <laughs> How are you feeling, Doc? Oh, these alcohol fumes are giving me a cheap drunk, but otherwise pretty routine. What are you grinning like a skunk for? Maybe it's because for the first time since I've been on this ship, I'm seeing a crew. What do you think you've been living with all this time? Just 167 separate guys. There's a big difference, Doc. 
I think these guys are strong enough now to take all the miserable, endless days ahead of us. <laughs> I only hope I'm strong enough. Look, Ben. That MP again. I just got orders at the post, sir. This ship is restricted. For the rest of it, stay in Elysium. I posted armed guards at the gangway. Your captain has to report to the island commander at 0700. He's mad. Sir. Good night. Well, there goes your liberty. But it was worth it. That liberty was worth anything. I think you're right, Johnson. Huh? I think you're right. Ship's company ready, Captain. We're being kicked out of this port. I had a feeling this liberty was a bad idea. That's why we'll never have one again. We're going to erase this blunt from my record if we have to work 24 hours a day. And if there ain't enough cargo work, Mr. Roberts here is going to find some. Isn't that right, Mr. Roberts? Isn't that right, Mr. Robert? Yes, sir. And I can't think of a better man for the job. He's a man who keeps his word no matter what. Now, Mr. Roberts, take these men back aft to handle lines and see that they work up a sweat. Did you hear me, Mr. Roberts? I gave you an order. Yes, Captain. I heard you. How do you answer when I give an order? I oh, answer. Yes, That's more like it. That's more like it. Dismiss the man. What do you mean, Mr. Roberts? I don't know. Just what he said, I guess. What'd you let him give you all that guff for? Because he's tired, that's why. Hey, Mr. Roberts, something came for you in the mail this morning. Get a load of this. To all ships and stations. Heightened war offensive has created urgent need aboard combat ships for experienced officers. All commanding officers are hereby directed to forward with their endorsement all applications for transfer from officers with 24 months sea duty. Let me see that. You've got 29 months. I take up your letter. Sign it and I'll take it in. Go on, sign it, Mr. Roberts. Don't take off like a bird. What are you waiting for, Mr. Roberts? Look, uh, Dolan, I'm tired. You I... ain't too tired to sign your name. Now take it easy, Dolan. I'm not going to sign it. All right. Come on, let's get going. Came over him. Take it easy. But, but crying out loud. Coming. Hey, Doc. Uh, Mr. Culver, can we see you officers a minute? Sure. What is it? Tell him what happened, Mannion. Uh, well, sir. Mr. Roberts just put Dolan on report. We've seen him. On report? <laughs> yes, sir. He ain't going to turn out to be like an officer, is he, Doc? What was this trouble with Dolan? Dolan was just kidding him about not sending any more letters. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Roberts turns white and he yells, Shut up, Dolan. Shut your mouth. I've had enough. Dolan naturally got snotty back at him, and Mr. Roberts put him on report. I don't... Oh, <laughs> hello, Doug boy. Uh, all right. Doctor, uh, we'll get that medical storeroom cleaned out tomorrow. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Doc, I want to talk to you. Frank, why don't you get some coffee in the wardrobe? I don't want any coffee. Uh, will you go out anyway? I want to talk to Doc. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. I'll, uh, I'll go to the radio shack and listen to the war news. Doc, transfer me, will you, to a hospital on this island? You can do it. You don't need the captain's approval. Say there's something wrong with my eyes or my feet What or... good would that do? Plenty. I could lie around that hospital till the ship sails. Now, will you do it, Doc? Doug. Why did you put Dolan on report just now? I gave him an order, and he didn't carry it out fast enough to shoot me. No. No, that's not true. It was the war. It's, it's ending, and I couldn't get into it. And there was Dolan giving me guff about something, and, and all of a sudden I hated him. I hated all of them. If they think I'm bucking for a promotion, if they think I'd walk ten feet across the room to get anything from that captain, then I'm through with the whole ungrateful mob. Does this crew owe you something... What do you mean by that? You talk as if it did. Hey, Doc, it's over. The war's over in Europe. The Germans surrendered. It's all over. It's all over. I uh, would remind you there's still a minor skirmish here in the Pacific. Yeah, I'll miss that one, too. Hey, 
We've got to celebrate. Well, what'll it be? Alcohol and orange juice or orange juice and alcohol? No, no, that's not good enough. Say, we've got to think of something that'll lift this ship right out of the water and turn it around the other way. Doug. Doug, why didn't I think of it before? What an idea I got. What a wonderful idea. Doug, you said I never had any ideas. You said I never finished anything I started. Well, I, I was going to save this for, for your birthday. Here. What is it? it? It looks like the cardboard tube from a roll of toilet paper. Yeah, yeah it was, but I, I made a firecracker. We're going to throw a firecracker under the old man's bunk. Bam, bam, bam. Wake up, you old buckers. It's me. Ah, it's Frank, that's the most beautiful idea I ever heard of. Say, will it work? I'll take it down to the laundry and test it. Hey, that's my laboratory. I got everything hid down there behind the soap plate. Yeah, Frank, take off. Say, what did you use for powder? The fulminator mercury. I'll be right back. Fulminator mercury? Hey, that stuff's murder. You think he means it? Of course not. Where could he get fulminate of mercury? Well, I don't know. He's pretty resourceful. Didn't he dig up that nurse? <laughs> How about a drink, Doug? Doc, I've been living with a genius. How else could you celebrate V.E. Day? A firecracker under the old man's bunk. Uh, here's your drink. <laughs> well, no better days. Okay. And to a great American, Frank Thurlow Pulver, soldier, statesman, scientist. And friend of the working girl. <laughs> What's that? That's fulminated mercury. What? Oh, no. Doc, we got to get up. This may be pretty bad. Boy, oh, boy. That stuff's terrific. Pulver, you all right? Uh, what's that white stuff? Soap suds. The laundry's kind of beat up. The, uh, the mangle's on the other side of the room now. And there's a new porthole on the starboard side where the electric iron went through. And I guess a steam line must have busted or something. <laughs> I was up to my ears and lather and soap suds flying around. It was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it's a miracle. He isn't even scratched. <laughs> Come on down and see it, Doug. It's a winter wonderland. Hey, Frank, our celebration's just getting started. The night's young and our duty is clear. You're going down and get the rest of your stuff. You huh? proved it'll work. You just hit the wrong target. We're going to make another firecracker and put it right where it belongs. The rest of my stuff was uh, in the laundry, Doug. It all went up. There isn't any more. Oh, I'm sorry, Doug. I'm awful sorry. Oh, that, that's all right, Frank. Maybe I can scrounge some more tomorrow. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it was a good idea, though, wasn't it, Doug? Oh, Frank, it was a great idea. Yeah. I'm proud of you. It just didn't work, that's all. Where are you going, Doug? Not on deck. Oh, wait till I get cleaned up. I'll, I'll go with you. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to turn in after that. It, it's okay, Frank. Doc, he was happy there for a minute, wasn't he? Mm. What's the matter with him anyhow, Doc? Did you find out? No, he wouldn't tell me. But I know one thing he's feeling tonight, and that's panic. Tonight he feels his war is dying before he can get to it. I let him down. He wanted to celebrate, and I let him down. <laughs> You should have seen that passageway with solid soap suds. <laughs> hey, what was in them croquet things we had for chow tonight? Oh, all the rest. Good evening. Did you hear the news? The war's over in Europe. Yes, sir, we heard. Um, Dolan, I, I guess I kind of blew my top tonight. I'm sorry. I'm taking you off report. Whatever you want, sir. Well, I guess I'll hit the old sack. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Oh, that's great, yeah. huh? I didn't realize how late it was. Hey, Doug, come down and listen to the radio. Churchill was on. No, no, thanks. Yeah, you should have heard him. You and you alone must recognize our enemies. The forces of ambition, cruelty, arrogance, and stupidity. You must destroy them, tear them out as you would a malignant growth. Oh, he was great. He was... Just... Well... Oh, good night, Doug. Hmm. Malignant growth. Tear them out as you would a... A malignant growth. Malignant growth. So long, you malignant growth. And so, the bed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hey, what happened? Hey, who put water in my helmet? Hey, what happened? The Marine. It must be a submarine. Hey, get away from your life, Raph. He didn't say abandon ship. Hey, Dolan, are you supposed to be up there? Yeah. Hey, Slammer, you're supposed to be there for yeah, sure. Yeah, he was there last. What's the matter with you? Hey, Dolan, Dolan, where's my battle station? I don't know. Look around. Yeah, yeah, all but mine. All battle stations, man, and ready, Captain. Give me that thing, Captain. All right, all right, who did it? You're going to stay here all night, so somebody confesses. It's an insult to the owner of this ship. I'm going to find out who threw that palm tree overboard if it takes all night. Let me see that rotten Captain, ask you. Find some paddle station, hey, will you? Lost the palm tree's gone. What do you know? Roberts, he's the one. Get him up here. Roberts, you get up here in a hurry. I'm giving you an order. Here he comes. Uh, Mr. Roberts, do you remember where my old oh, father was? Did you want to see me, Captain? You did it. You did it. Don't lie to me. You double-crossed me. You've gone back on your word. Oh, no, I haven't, Captain. Yes, you have. I kept my part of the bargain. I gave this crew liberty, but you've gone back on your word. You hear that? Shut up. Shut up. I don't see how you can say that, Captain. I haven't sent in any more letters. I'm talking about what you did tonight. Tonight? I don't understand you. What do you think I did? You know what you did. You stabbed me in the back. You stabbed me in the back, you... Oh, Captain, Captain Joe at the wash station, quick! What happened? What? Will the doctor please report to the captain's cabin on the devil? Gangway? Gangway? Hey, Doc, tell us what's going on, huh? Okay, okay. Hey, Stefanowski, you can see in the porthole what's happening. We got him on the couch. What's the doc do? Holding the wastebasket. Look out, look out. Here he comes. Got him. That's the word of the crew to secure from General Porters. And tell the men to be quiet. The captain's resting nicely now, and I think that's desirable. Sure, sure. Well, guess I'd better get back inside. Uh, good night, Mr. Roberts. Good night, Mr. Roberts. Good night, Mr. Roberts. Uh, good night, Mr. Roberts. Good night, Mr. Roberts. Huh? Oh. Oh, good night, Dolan. <laughs> off this bucket before I even wake up. Yeah. Are they flying you all the way to the Livingston? The dispatch said I was transferred and traveled by air if possible. Hey, it'll, it'll probably be at Okinawa now. Okinawa? Gee, you be careful, Doug. I even got a destroyer. <laughs> it's too much. I got your orders, Mr. Roberts. Interpret it. You're now officially detached from this bucket. Let me be the first. Thanks, Dolan. Say, Dolan, how about these orders? I haven't sent a letter for a month. Ah, you know how the Navy works, Mr. Roberts. You better get cracking. The old man said if you ain't off of here in an hour, he's going to throw you off. <laughs> Is that all he said? You'd think after two years... Oh, he's busy as a mother skunk. He sent over to the island, and now he's got two palm trees. He already set a 24-hour armed watch over him. Oh, oh, that reminds you, Mr. Pulver. The captain wants to see you right away. He does. So what in blazes did I do with his laundry last week? So long, Mr. Roberts. What do you think of the crew now, Doug? Uh, they're all right. I think they're nice guys, all of them. Uh-huh. And how do you think they feel about you? Why, well, I, I think they like me all right, until the next guy comes along. You don't think you're necessary to them? Oh, no officer's necessary to the crew, Doc. Are you going to leave this ship believing that? Well, I, that's nothing against them. A, a crew's too busy looking after themselves to care about anyone else. Well, take a good deep breath, Buster. What do you think got you your orders? Prayer and fasting? Sending in enough weedy box tops? My orders? This crew got you transferred. They were so busy looking out for themselves that they took a chance of landing in prison for five years, any one of them. Since you couldn't send in a letter for transfer, they, uh, they sent one in for you. Since they knew the captain wouldn't sign it approved, they didn't bother him. They signed it for him. What do you mean? 
They forged the captain's name? Which one of them? They had a contest. Every man on the ship had a crack at it. And the closest to the captain's signature won. How did you find out about this? I was a contestant. I was also a judge. Also, my department contributed four gallons of grain alcohol to the contest. It was quite a thing to see, Doug. A hundred and sixty-seven guys with one idea in their heads. To do something for Mr. Roberts. I wish you hadn't told me that, Doc. I was afraid to say before what I really feel. I love those guys. I, I think they're the greatest on earth. All of a sudden, I, I feel there's something awful wrong in leaving them. What can I say to them? Nothing. You're not supposed to know. I'm supposed to write you on your new ship and tell you. At the bottom, I'm supposed to write, Thanks for the liberty, Mr. Roberts. Thanks for everything. Oh, how do you like that? I'm the new cargo officer. And that's not all. I gotta have dinner with him tonight. He likes me. <laughs> Come in. Uh, what's this? A fire and rescue party, sir. Heard you had a fire in here? No, but... A uh, false alarm. Happens all the time. <laughs> well, we might as well drink the stuff in this fire extinguisher. Hey, uh, pour it, will you, Dolan? Well, let me have your glass, Mr. Roberts. Uh, Mr. Roberts, uh, there's a story going around that you're leaving us. That's right, Insignia, and I... Well, uh, excuse me. <laughs> we thought, well, we ought to give you a little going away present. Go ahead, Dowdy. Uh, here, Mr. Roberts. Go ahead, open it. <laughs> what is it, Doug? It's a palm tree, see? It was Dowdy's idea. The Stefanowski thought up the words. The Mannion cut it out of sheet brass in the machine shop. Read the word, Mr. Roberts. Go oh. ahead. Order of... <laughs> you read it, Doc. Order of the Palm. To Lieutenant J.G. Douglas Roberts. For action against the enemy. Above and beyond the call of duty on the night of 8 May 1945. Uh, uh, Stefanowski thought up the words. They're fine words. Uh, the boat's here, Mr. Roberts. They want to shove off right away. Thanks. Well, goodbye, Doc. Goodbye, Doug. And thanks, Doc. Okay. Goodbye, Frank. Goodbye, Doug. Now remember, I'm counting on you. Now hear this. Now hear this. Sweepers, man your brooms. Clean sweep down, four and out. Now hear this. All men put on report today will fall in on the quarter deck and form three ranks. Now hear this. All divisions will draw their mail at 1700 in the mess hall. Oh, man, you got your mail yet? No, I uh, got the palm tree watch. So what's your news, Doc? Uh, my wife got some new wallpaper for the living room. What's the proverb? We'll be finished with a cargo in a few minutes. I just found out what the captain decided. He ain't going to show a movie again tonight. Why not? He's still punishing us because he caught Insigna without his shirt on two days ago. You got to go in and see him. I did. I asked him to show a movie yesterday. Mr. Pulver, what good does that do us today? You got to keep needling that guy, I'm telling you. Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll take care of it in my own way. Oh, great. No movies again tonight. Hey, Doc. This letter's from Doc. Yeah, what does he say? Yeah. Uh, this will be short and sweet as we're shoving off in ten minutes. This is dated uh, three weeks ago. He met Fornell, the guy I went to college with. Listen, I'm in the war at last, Doc. I've caught up with that task force that passed me by. And I'm thinking now of all you guys on that bucket, sailing from tedium to apathy and back again with an occasional side trip to monotony. I discovered, Doc, that the most terrible enemy of this war is the boredom that eventually becomes a faith and therefore a sort of suicide. And I know now that the ones who refuse to surrender to it are the strongest of all. Right now, I'm looking at a hunk of brass hanging over my bunk, attached to the most bilious ribbon I've ever seen. I'd rather have it than the Congressional Medal of Honor. It tells me what I'll always be proudest of. At a time in the world when courage counted most, I lived among 167 brave men. So, Doc, and you, Frank, don't let those guys down. 
Of course, I know that by this time they must be very happy because the captain's overhead is filled with marbles and, uh... The end it here. Uh, it's signed Doug. Can I see that, Frank? Thanks, here, here. Hey, this next one's from Fornell. Yeah, I'd rather have it than the Congressional Medal of... Well, I'm glad he found that out. Hey, Frank, what's the matter? All done, Mr. Plover. We Frank. secured the hatch cover. No word on the movie, I suppose. Frank. What is it? Mr. Roberts is dead. This is from Fornell. They took a Jap suicide plane. It killed everyone in the twin forty battery, and then it went on through and killed Doug and another officer in the wardroom. They were drinking coffee when it hit. Mr. Carver, can I give that letter to the crew? Yes. Yeah. Take Mr. Roberts' letter. It stands. <laughs> coffee. Mannion, go down and get your mail. I'll watch your palm trees for you. You will? Thanks, Mr. Pogger. Frank. Frank, you all right? Frank! Frank! Yeah? Who is it? Captain, this is Ensign Pulver. I just threw your palm trees overboard. Now, what's all this chicken about no movie tonight? You have just heard the best plays production of Mr. Roberts, starring Arthur Kennedy. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. I don't suppose radio listeners cheer much for fear of astonishing the neighbors or waking the baby. But if you feel like it, go ahead. Mr. Roberts is a grand play, and Arthur Kennedy has given a grand performance. He is giving another fine performance on Broadway, too, in Arthur Miller's drama, The Crucible. And now for next week's best play. It will be Rachel Crowther's witty comedy drama of manners, Susan and God. Our star will be Judith Evelyn, and with her will be Paul McGrath, This is Chapman saying goodbye until next week. Mr. Roberts was transcribed and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. In the cast were Leon Janney as Ensign Pulver, John McGovern as Doc, Wendell Holmes as the Captain, Joe Julian as Dowdy, Josh Shelley as Insignia, Bill Lipton as Mannion, Elaine Ross as the Army Nurse, James Stevens as Dolan, Alan Hewitt as the MP, and recreating their original Broadway roles, Rusty Lane as Chief Johnson and Stephen Hill as Stefanowski. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Wilson, directed by Edward King. This is Fred Collins speaking. And this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.